Then of Lak Gemara, we are up to the Kuf Ahmed Aleph. And they we're up to the Gemara Tanu Rabbanan, about 10, 12 lines on the top of the page. The last thing we learned was people that you don't distribute Truma to, like including a Chayda Shait Mekatan, and also a slave. And then we mentioned a woman as well. We gave two possible reasons why, by women, we don't, if they come to the granary, and, and so on. So the Gemara Tanu, what we learned, Eved Isha. The, an Eved and an Isha, both of them, and Chokin Lehem Truma, we do not distribute Truma, based on Granus. An Eved, we said the reason why not is because people will assume that the Eved herself is a coin, so we don't allow it. In those areas where we give such testimony that we saw them receiving Truma, therefore must be a coin. And a woman, we said either Machlek is either because of Yichud or because when she'll get divorced, she's a basis, so she'll continue going to eat Truma. Says the Gemara, the Makam Shechokin, nice in the Isha. But where you do distribute, then you should give a woman first. There's a line of people, fewer people, give the woman first. My karma, first of all, you just said you don't, and then you say, if you do, give her first. If you don't, you don't. This is what we meant. The When it comes to the different miser, miser for poor, the third and sixth year, which we uh, distribute to the poor people. Those, those misers, so um, generally speaking, you don't give it from a granary. Generally speaking, you can come to your house to collect mice only. It's nice and easy to We're talking about that they don't come to the base of granaries. They don't go to granaries. They go to your house. That's where you distribute the only from. You give it to the woman first. Tayser argues because they said mice only. There were two places where they distributed from. They distributed from the grave of the granary, like all other everything else they distributed. It's only it came the time of Pesach when by then you had to um, you make sure you com you complete giving out all your mice. Then they would give it at home as well. My time, and why should women get first? Because it's degrading for them to stand in line. So it's women first. So now you know where women first come from, right in the Gemara. In fact, Amar Rabba says, I want you to know in the beginning, Medesha, first, my first thought was, I had two different people come to me, a man and a woman. They want to have a, a, a dispute with somebody. Kamoi. Um, for me, Habi Sharina, Tigre, the Gavra, Beresh. I would always take the man's first because they thought he had to go down and learn. He had these pressing mitzvahs. So I thought I'll take care of him first. I mean, the Machai mitzvahs because he has to do some mitzvahs, extra mitzvahs. Keep the Shaman, the main thing he has to do is learn Torah. Keep the Shaman, when I heard about this about the covered, when it comes to covered, you have to give a woman more covered because it's degrading for her to wait in line. Sharina, Tigre, the Itza, Beresh. I first dealt with the women's issues. My time in Mishim Zalusa because it's degrading for her. It says that we're talking about here that a koyin and, and, and an ever got mixed up. The shivcha and her mistress were both inside a cave and the kids got mixed up. So we have all the chumras of a koyin and so on. And one of the chumras was that they cannot, both of them can never get married while they're in that situation. And why is that? Because as a koyin, you cannot marry uh, only certain people. But as an ever, you cannot marry any, anyone that a koyin could marry and ever can't. So therefore, you're in a state of limbo. Then the mission said, but if you if you set each other free, so now you have a Yisrael and a coin, so you can only marry those who are suitable for a coin. So the mother, Shikru Iboy It sounds like you have an option whether you want to set each other free. Or my the very the very fact that you can find some of this conundrum that you cannot either one cannot get married, that's enough re compelling reason to force them to set each other free. Or my Lisa Shikhu, we have the same thing by someone who's a half slave and a half free. We force the master to set him free, and the slave cannot afford to pay his way out. Write a, a may turn into a loan and he'll eventually pay you. Lisa Shivchedi Yochel, they cannot marry a maid because it's a koinder. Bas koinder Yochel, you cannot marry a Yiddish woman because it's an evidence. Amar Rav, Rav says you're right. Ema read it as if it says koifinoy, so we compel them. Umeshachin zeze, and they set each other free. Then you say noisin and lechumra. We give them the chumra to koin and chayv. So what other chumras are there? You already spelled it out. The main chumra is about marriage, and uh, and so on. He said truma. You you mentioned basically you covered everything. What else is it to cover? So my hechas about the other little papa lemin chasam. There's a difference between the mincha that he uh, the flower offering that he saw brings or coin brings. The flower offering that a coin brings is called tia. The whole thing gets burnt in mizbech. So there's no kmitza. You don't set anything aside because the entire mincha gets burnt. But by Yisrael, you have to have a kmitza that they scoop out the three fingers by coin and that goes on the mizbech and the balance is eaten by the coin. And in fact, you're not allowed to put the entire uh, mincha on the mizbech. So what happens if these, one of these two people want to bring a Karmincha? Maybe they're a Koyin, maybe they're Yisrael. 
So the Mahir the popular min chasam to their flower offering. Nikmetes committee so first you set aside when they've kufa medal of about ten lines above the Mishnah. We said they give them all the chumras of a coin and the and the Yisrael and the Mishnah basically highlighted all the chumras. So what are we adding by saying that? So we're saying we are highlighting when it comes to a flower offering as a coin. There is no kmitza. The entire milchah gets burned in the As a Yisrael, you take the kmitza out, and that's what you burn in the The rest must be eaten, and you're not allowed to burn the rest. So what do you do here? So this is what you do. You take the kmitza like the milchah of the yid, but the ain't on the chelis, But on the other hand, you cannot eat uh, the balance of the milchah, because milchah's kainim gets all burnt. So what do you do? Okay, so you put them both in his bed, but separately. You do commit to like Israel, and the balance is still burning his bed like a coin. So you know, it's not so simple. Are we going to read the positive? By a carbon by a carbon that you're meant to be eating. If you're going to take the whole thing and put them in his bed, the tailors are clearly I don't want you. I don't want you to go ahead and put it on the Mizbeh. So if if it's a Israel, but putting the entire thing in the bed, you're doing the wrong thing. So what are you supposed to do? The Gemara gives a few options. You put it, the, 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 you put the balance on the back, but you say to yourself that this balance is not here as a carbon; it's here as wood, firewood, to create more fire. And how do you know that you can do that? The problem is, don't bring it up on the back as a carbon. But if you bring it up on the back as firewood, no problem. As a coin, it's all getting burnt. And as a Yisrael, the balance is burnt as firewood, not as a carbon. And how do you know that's an option? The time you will learn. The Blossoman Oimir also says it says the Pasik, the Reach and the Khayach, it says in the Pasik that that you should bring part of the Mizbech and to the Mizbech, do not bring it as a Reach the Khayach. That's the Pasik right after Lysak Tiru. And that's talking about the case over there is where the limbs of a carbon chatos got mixed up with the limbs of a carbon oil. So what do you do? Because the limbs of a carbon chatos don't go in Mizbech. So Abelosa says you put them all in Mizbech, and I'll see uh, that the uh, the, if the part that the, the limbs of Chatos, I'll say it's on the Mizbech, but it's, it's brought there as firewood. It's only Reich Nechayich that's forbidden, only bring it as a carbon. But if you bring it as firewood, not a problem. And the Chacham disagree with that. The Chacham say, no, let the entire mixture stay overnight. It becomes nicer, and then you can burn the whole thing. So Rabbi, of course, Rabbi Lazar said, you have to mildly, you know, bring it up as a carbon. That was a mildly, she makes have a mind wood. Same thing here with the carbon mincha. That you bring the, the both the both separate the commits and everything else, but you put everything in his back and you have in mind that the shirai and the leftover is wood. who disagree and they say let the whole thing remain. They don't believe in this firewood business. According to what you do with the here, you know, as as a yisrael, you have to eat the balance, but as a coin, you have to burn the whole thing. So what do you do? So the other like we do like the, the other rabbis, the rabbis of Rab Shimon, the time we learn the rabbis of Rab Shimon, Amen. The rabbis says this is um. A coin who, um, who but, um, you know, some, certain avedas that you do, you bring a carbon uh, oil of the The carbon oil, you know, if you come and you eat, it's a mix of carbon oil of the made of shua. You're going to keep an oil, uh, carbon oil of the It depends on your commensurate to your wealth, your status, and your economic status. That's the kind of carbon you bring. So, um, if you're very, very poor, you bring a minchas chaita. You can't even before an animal or a bird, you bring them a flower over it called minchas chaita. And it says there that you have to give part of it to the coin, like any other mincha. And um, and even if you're a coin, in this case, we normally you burn the whole thing with bed. In this case, you have to bring it like a throw. I want this kmitza, and so too the coin brings kmitza. But as a coin, also you're supposed to burn the rest. So what do you do with the rest? Um, so, so you take the um, you take the shirai and you make a separate carbon out of it. That's what Avshimah says. The Avlos Avshimah says, the Shirayim, you take it and you scatter it over the base Hadeshim. And um, that's where you put all the ashes, and that's where you put the feathers, near the Mizbech. <clears throat> and, and the Hacham only argue regarding a Mithras Chaita of a Kayim. Um, and they felt that you should bring the whole thing up, because it's just like it's a special Mincha that he brings. But over here, you cannot do that. So everyone will agree, you scatter it on the ashes. Says the Gemara, how came it's cut out when he brings the came for himself and the Shirayim is Pazna Beis Adesh and the leftovers you scatter over the ashes. I feel that Abban who argued it by a coin, my plea that Abba Zarshim El Mikhil Chaytu coin, he only argued regarding a coin who has to bring a Minchas Chaytu sin offering, the Basa Krabi, because he has to bring it up. Allah over here, I feel that Abban by the year, even the Abban on. A moider that is scattered over the ashes. The Rashi holds that Truma Sadeshin is next to Mizbech, and there are all the ashes and the feathers and everything else goes there. So you put it there as well. 
Tracer Weber holds there were two different deshens. There's one next to the Mizbech, on the east side of the Mizbech, and one was next to the ramp, on the east side of the ramp. And, um, and he said that they were, that they were very different. Um, that they were very different. He said that um, that which is on the east side of the Mizbech, that's where they put uh, the leftovers of the inner Mizbech, and they put the leftovers of the Menaira, and they put the, you know, some of the parts of the, of the bird. Um, and that's a true selection they did it every single morning. Um, and what they did was um, on the east side of the ramp, that's where they used to burn the, the, the apostle of Carbonus and so on and so forth. And that's where they put the Shirayim on the east, on the ramp, on the east side of the ramp, rather than the east side of the Mizbech. Um, because they got burned. Okay, first thing about Mishnah. Now we're, we're talking this whole pair, we're talking about people that got mixed up. So what happens? Mishlah, somebody didn't wait. After she will soon see whether her husband died, or we're talking about a case of divorce, we'll soon see, or actually something else. Anyhow, the three months did not expire since you were you're living with the first man. And then Manasa, the older, she married and married a second man before the three months expire. Now she became pregnant and she, she gave birth. And you do, we don't know. In Ben edition, in Ben Shivalachan. We learned a long time ago. By Yibun, you have to wait three months so to determine if the child is the first husband or the second husband. Over here also, every marriage, you have to wait three months so we can determine ascertain whose child this is. But here, they didn't wait three months, and we don't know. So we go like this. Um, and you do it. We don't know. In ben tishu edition, in ben shivalach. So what do you do? How you la boni min edition or boni min hasheni? They had that, um, they had the, the, the first man has a son, a definite son, and the second man has a definite son. And then you have the son in between. That sort of, um, we don't know whose son it is. The din of here is, is in the lame If let's say this questionable son dies, so the, the, the brother, there's only one brother of the first son, what does he do? He gives chalitza. Um, but he cannot, <clears throat> he cannot, um, what do you call it? He cannot give yibum because maybe that this, the questionable son belongs to the second hus husband, which means the wife has a mitzvah of yibum or something. So um, how can you, a, a foreigner, the son of the first husband marry her, and because the the, the, the other uh, what do you call it? the other brother is they have the same mother, and so therefore the first brother and the third brother have the same mother, and and you're not allowed to live with your brother's wife. The only time you live with your brother's wife is if it's the same father. You have a mitzvah of yibum, but he doesn't have a mitzvah of yibum. So it could be that this middle son belongs to uh, um, the other to the other father, and therefore. You have no mitzvah at all. All you can do is chalitza. The same thing with the other son. And the same thing he with their wives. Question what he's their brother and the paternal brother, maternal brother. Okay, so chalitza la miyavin, because maybe he's only a maternal brother to uh, to one of them, and therefore he cannot be miyavin that guy's wife, because he's a curse. Chayin hu lehem, chalitza la miyavin. He doesn't say anything to them. What about hoyile achim in addition? The achim in hasheni, but shalom is there. What happened to the share mother? With um, uh, he uh, with the second husband, with the second father, he doesn't share a mother. So, which means that if, if he, if he is the first, if he's a, a son of the first one, then he has no relation with the second, with the son of the second one, because it's not his father, and nor is it his mother. It's a son from another name. But if he's from the second one, then it is his paternal uh, brother. So, what happened in this case? There was one brother from each set. Shalema is saying, but not from that mother. So who chalit umiyabim? He can give chalitz or yibim to the wife of the first one. He was the only brother. So the wife of the first, let's say the, uh, the older brother from the first man died, then he can give chalitz or yibim. Why? Because if he is a brother, right? If he is, he was born from the first father. He's the brother. His mamish has mitzvah yibim. And if he's not the brother, then there's no other brother alive. So therefore, there is no mitzvah yibim. So manashach he couldn't marry. The, the wife of the first son or give chalitza. However, the heim who chaylu to miyabim, so he can be he can give chalitza and he can give yibum, <clears throat> and he can do the same thing with the second with the second brother. If I'm you know if I'm the second if I'm your brother then in the midst of yibum. If I'm not your brother then there is no other brother. So therefore I'm allowed to marry her because we're not related at all. But the heim they echad chaylus the echad miyabim other brother, but the less if he died, then one of the brothers gives chalitza, one is the yibum because one of them, because she had the girl has a mitzvah of yibum. Question is only with who? She doesn't know if her husband from the first father, the second father. 
So therefore, um, they have to give uh, one of them gives chalitza, and the other one can give yibum. Because if it's a sister-in-law, fine. And if not, that means that she's uh, she already received the chalitza as a foreigner. Um, there's no problem here. She already received the chalitza, so the other one can marry because we're not related. What happens if one brother will saw one brother for coin? No, you say Isha Ruil a coin. Um, sorry, what happened to the first father? Was the Yisrael the second father coin, or vice versa? And now this kid doesn't know his status. Same thing we learned the previous Mishnah where you don't know two kids got mixed up, you don't know the status. So we'll say, repeat the whole Mishnah. No, you see, you, you take all the Chumras. No, you see, Ruil a coin, Kuli Mesa, Surabul coin, Mimetal Mesa, can I go to cemetery? But if he does get tummy, ain't no safe because I'm buying me a of lashes. Because you don't know if he's a coin or not. Anyway, if you don't know if you did it, you don't have to pay the, the, the penalty because prove that I'm not a coin, but you just have to set it aside for a kapara. You don't distribute him from the granary because we don't want people to assume automatically he's a coin. The truma that he sets aside for himself, he sells it because he cannot eat it, but he sells it, but the money he can keep, a dumbish loy. They know he doesn't get any distribution of the carbonus, maybe he's not a coin. They know he still likes a coin, they don't give him any. Ain't my teen as Shalom a yod on hand. You cannot, if he has coaching, you cannot take it away from him because maybe the coin who's going to take it from him. Who potted, he's potted from the gift that he saw has given a coin, which is the Zoya, the four, the foreleg of, of, of an animal, the Chaim and the jaws, what came in the stomach. Who bechayd, if he happens to have a firstborn, yeah, he roya actually is taib. He cannot eat from it. You bring it to the carbon, but he cannot eat from it because he's not a coin. So you let it wander about till the contract to move, and then he can keep it because, but he, um, because, um, which coin can come and claim it? The nation of Chumri claim and Chumri say give more the Chumri like we learned before with Kabbalists. What about his name claim? What about if the first father and the second father both claim? Then who onion aleim? He is an onion on them. Now how in the world can he be an onion on them? But the first man already died uh, before he was born. That's the whole point. We don't know who his father is. So the Gemara explains when they, when in, many years after somebody dies, if they do lika that's most of they collect his bones and they you know reinter him somewhere else. They zoom his uh, bone for some reason. Then they do that. It's like that day. It's like a new kavura, and you have to be an oinin. So that's how he can be an oinin for his first father. The heim oinin alav. This part is very difficult to understand. They are oinin if he dies. How can the first father be an oinin if the first father died before him? Predeceased him. That's the whole point over here. You might well talk about that. Who ain't a metamalahem? He cannot go to their um, to to to, to, to them. The heim ain't a metamiloy because they're not sure who is their son or not. And he again entering his reentering his bones, he can go. Who ain't no Yiddish son? He doesn't inherit them because each one will say, each the kids will say, you're not our brother. I will hate Yiddish son. They they yash him because who's going to claim it? Who potter al makosi? If he hits, if he strikes his father, or raklolosa, he crushes them. Shazev shazev. You can't be punished because you don't get lashes. I know it's And when you give hasra warning, you have to be definite. Oyle be mishmore shazev shazev. He could go ahead and work in the roster of which of both fathers, but the ain't no He doesn't get any benefit. He'll be doing mamas l'shem shemaim. You might yishnei be mishmar echad, but if both families were part of the same group, neitul chelik echad, then he gets at least one chelik as mamas shech. Whichever family I am part of, I belong there. Okay, says the First of all, we start off saying when there's this, you know, if we're not sure the first father, the second father, he could do chalitza yibum dafke mechel. First, you got to do the chalitza to make sure that if you, uh, if that's the woman who needs a yibum. That she's not married to a foreigner, but how do you want then to give him? I give him an Asia, but to do even first, Loy, the Kapoga, the Yvama, the Shok, could be that, um, could be that, um, that you're the real brother, and, um, and, uh, and she, sorry, you're not the real brother, and, and you're marrying the woman that had to marry the other one, so she's a Yvama, the Shok. That's why you have to give Khalid the first to, to uh, exempt her. And then Manashok, the remaining brother, this is really my, my, my sister uh, in law, fine. And then I'm doing Misa Yibum, and if it's not my sister in law, then she already received the Chalit. How much more is Shmuel? Now Shmuel says an interesting thing. If there were 10 Koinim that were standing, I remember one of them said when it was dark or something, it went away with all and had relations with this woman. And now we don't know which of them, none of them are fessing up, confessing that they're the ones who did it. We don't know who the father is, the mother doesn't know. Who's Pitch black. Havlad Shtuki, the kid is silenced. What do you mean Shtuki? What do you mean kid is silenced? Um, it's a proper coin, but it's silenced. In which respect is silenced? Ilam Mishav Shach, maybe the Kedavi doesn't inherit any of these coin of Shita. We don't know who his father is, so who, who is he going to inherit? We don't let him behave like a coin, even though we know that he's a coin and he can marry and he has to marry a, a kosher woman to a coin. 
but we don't let them work in the base of Mikdash because it's inappropriate. My time, what's the reason? I'm not the that the Kunu should be to you and your children afterwards, only if you know exactly who your children are. Being a Zara, we know exactly who can identify who the parents are. But like, we don't have that. Maskula Papa Elamiata, if you follow that logic of Abram, Abram, the sea, it says, the Yosla, the Himu, Kim, the Zara, the Abish will be the Abish to make a bond with you and a pact with you. Between you and, you and the children of future generations, also Michael Mazel Rahman, according to you, Zarah Hachrech is coming to tell you something. You have to know who the father is. And if not, what happens? Do not marry um, someone non Jewish, a non Jewess, or a Shivcha, because what happens is the children are no longer Jewish. The children go after her and they will no longer be considered Jewish. Basically, that's the question. We learned before. That in the case of your job, we don't know, you know, who's uh, which child it is. <clears throat> now we told by your your mama to wait three months, but she didn't wait three months. She married a brother-in-law, and now it's a suffix if it's a first, if it's a first husband or a second husband, and he's a koyin. The expression there is rishon ro li is koyin gadol. Now what? That this kid can be a koyin gadol. But you just said, you said that we want we have to identify the father. In that case, we don't know. It's Reuben who died or Shimon. They were both koyin. We don't know who it is. So we like Zara Mikhdachrov. Someone answered, that's not a thing. The Rabbanon, sorry, we like Zara Mikhdachrov, the Rabbanon. This whole concept that we need to be able to identify the father is only with the Rabbanon, because we didn't think it's appropriate in such a, such a noble position to have someone that we have no idea who the father is. Uh, and the cross, every time you look at him, you remember the, the deed of the mother and how he came about. But the cross, Machtab Alma. The Pasuk is merely in a smacht. So what? The Chi goes Rabbanon. When the Rabbanon say, Sepasnish, Biznus. If it came about through znus, but in the like Gaza, if it came out through marriage, just we don't know who the father is. That's that's not a, a, inappropriate. And therefore, the um, one guy says the mother, you're telling me if it's znus me Gaza Rabbanu, and you're telling me that what that by znus we were Gaza and we will not let him behave like Kaya. But now we learned in our Mishnah, Mishlei Shos Achabayla Shavad Hashem, wait three months. But no, so she married the only kid. My Achabayla, what do you mean after her husband? What, what happened here? What's the situation? She um, she didn't have a first husband. She married a second husband, but didn't wait the full three months. What happened to the first husband? Ilay Machir is why the first husband just literally died. Aim was safe. It says in the end of the Mishnah, who onion alayhem that he is an onion. If they die, he has to you know behave like an onion on that day. But if he, if the father died predeceased him, what's how can he be an onion? The heim onion alone. Bishleim who want to learn. Okay, the part the part that he's an onion, then mishkach love to me learn minusuyin. I can understand. How can I understand that? Minusuyin. Either the second father died, you know, years later, or the first father leaked at some of the kama. They're collecting his bones on the first, you know, they're they're reinterring it, and there you have to be an onion the day that it happened. And therefore, as an onion, you cannot, if you're a kind, you cannot eat full kachim, and and then so on. Elohim onion love. How is it possible the second the news that they can be an onion on him? How can the first father be an onion? He predeceased him. So obviously, when the mission says that she she left the first husband, went to the second husband, we, we mean maybe he divorced. She divorced the first husband, didn't wait the full three months. That'll be Grushin. Okay, well, my Achabai, I get by after the divorce. Let's see if that makes sense. Aim a safer, says in the safer, who ain't metamalem, he's not allowed to go to their funeral. The heim ain't metamalem, nor can they go to his funeral. Why? Because they're crying him and then, and then we don't know if they're related, right? Let's work this out for a second. If we're talking about that the first husband divorced her and the second uh, father is a queen as well, he had no right to marry as a divorcee. And if he married a divorcee, what's the product? He is no longer a queen. He's a chol. He's a chol. Why can't he go to the levaya of the second father? Okay, the first father is not a chol. So therefore he can't go to levaya. But the second father, why can't he go to the levaya? And so he must have bishle in the hay name. They cannot go to him, even though the second father did the wrong thing marrying a grusha, but he's still a queen. So he still has to behave like a queen. Why can't they go to uh, to the cemetery, the fathers, because they are they're a kainim, and we don't know if the son is there, so we don't know if they have a right to defile themselves. But he cannot go to their funeral. He cannot go to the second one. I understand why. Um, but the, um, um, sorry, um, I, I don't, as he said, the second one, I understand. <clears throat> Why? Because maybe he's the son of the first father. So he's a proper coin. And therefore, he cannot go to the second father's funeral. I understand that. 
Elishul Tamila. Now that he's that he's around, he should be able to go to the first world because Manusha. If it's his father, no, so then he's a and he's allowed to go to his father. And if it's not his father, he belongs to the second one, he's a cholo, and a cholo can go to anybody's funeral. So Mamanusha, he should be able to go to his first father's funeral. He cannot go to the second one because maybe he's the son of the first one, he's a real kind. But the second one, but his first one should go to Manusha. He better you if he's the son of the first one, Shafika Matamil. He has every right, he's a mitzvah to go. The Barbasu, if he tak is the son of the second one, that means his father married a, a Grusha, a divorcee. He's a chol. Shapik kamatama. The chol is the chol. El alav biznus. So therefore, you must conclude when it what happened was nobody got married to anybody. She has nus with one guy, and then she has nus with the second guy. And now we don't know who the father is. So we see that even though there's nus, and yet we say that what that he and, and just pure nus, and yet we say that he has to behave like a koyin. So how can Shmuel say if we don't know, can identify the father? He no longer behaves like a koyin. Means baila means husband. It means the one who had relations with him. That's clearly the Mishnah. That since we don't know um, if they both, in the, if let's say both families are in the same week, in the same roster, he joins them. How can he join them if 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 he's not? Um, if, if according to Shmuel, we cannot identify the father. He can't go to base of English. But to you, to the Shmuel, the question is Shmuel. Amar Rav Rav Shmaiyas, he has not give a fourth possibility. It's not. The death of the first man. It's not the divorce. It's not uh, znus. Rather, it is in a case where there's no znus, and yet, it's, uh, and there's no divorce, and the second koyin was able to marry her, and yet the first koyin was married to her. How's that possible? It's possible if she's a young girl, she's a mamenis. If she was a young girl and then became 12 years old, she walked out. So there was, it was legally married until 12, and uh, then she walked out, and she's allowed to marry another koyin. And now we don't know. She, did, she didn't wait until full three months, and we don't know whose child it is. So here you have a case, there's no news. Taka, we don't know, we can't identify the father, but therefore the child is a I had a question on Shmuel. That's what I want to say. Omar Shmai, my man is, says, what are you talking about? My man is, has to be under 12. Me, Koyolda, can a girl under 12 give birth? But Tony, Rabbi, become a Nachm, and Rabbi, the Nachm said, Shalosh Nashim, that three women, we had to be paid already. Three women, Misham, three women are allowed to uh, use like a diaphragm, not to use. Um, Use of common material there to prevent the semen of penetrating. Tana, a young girl, who better, so she's a pregnant woman, or Manika, and if she's a nursing mother. And the mother explains why. We had it before already. Tana, a young girl, Shemet is out maybe she'll fall pregnant with Thomas, but she's not able really to carry the full nine months, and she it will cause her possibly death. Um, as we had in the whole more discussion before. Um, who better is a pregnant girl, Shematasa Ubra Sandal, that maybe she'll fall pregnant again. And and uh, and then it will flatten out the first um, the first child like a fish sandal. So um, even though we you know you can't become really pregnant, but maybe you can become pregnant not to not to be able to give a child that's going to live, but maybe to become pregnant enough to cause damage. Uh, Manika, a nursing mother, Maybe she will lose her, her ability to nurse her son, and she will die. The Azuk Tana. What's the definition of Tana? Has to protect herself. There's a possibility she'll fall pregnant. And we're worried that she won't make it. From 11 to 12. Under 11, under 11, she's not going to fall pregnant. Oh, yes, I can. If it's more than 12, again, then she's mature enough that she can carry the child at full term. So it's only between 11 and 12. Is Misha Memish Kitaka, but the main main hold that you continue, everything will be all right. Chomis say, Acha Zuba Shamel Kitaka, but let's remind me that Achmo Debish will have Rahmanus already. Shinema. It says, um, 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 so what happens? The bottom line is that um, they will make sure that you know, well, she won't become pregnant or something, so therefore everything will work out. So what do we see from here? That a katana can give birth. What do you tell me? He's talking about a girl who's mind she walked out of her first husband, but if, she, if, if under 12, because over 12, you can't walk out, then she has to be divorced. Under 12, she can walk out. But under 12, she couldn't, there's no possibility that she gave birth really to the first husband, or even there is, it's very unlikely. And as even like more said before, it's possible, but it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely, then for sure the child belongs to the second father. What's the suffix here? So the more answers. So go back to Shmuel's question. Here we see we obviously it's not uh, we see that even though it was nus, and yet uh, the child is since the child definitely is a coin between the two people that were Mazana, and it, it can work as a coin. Anymore, no. Shmuel's right. If you can't identify the father when it comes to nus, it's not a coin. Mishkachla, what's part of my mission? The kedusha toys. Our mission told me you got engaged. Uh, with a with a condition, and the condition didn't work out. Now, usually we say it only remains in the realm of kedushin, 
once people uh, are married they're happily married and, and you don't make it tonight but the Kiddush here is that for whatever reason even though they live together and it could be that she even came pregnant nevertheless the tonight didn't work out and they decide to to um, undo the entire marriage so those Lucy um, and even though you know retrospectively we say it, it's like Lucy, that's not really the sign of Lucy that Shmuel was talking about and therefore, even though we cannot identify the child in our case, he learned it faster. If she wasn't forced, as soon as she committed adultery, she forbid her husband. Honey, faster, but if she was raped, would tell her she permitted. The yesh lecha and in this case, learned it faster. But there's another case, even though she did it willingly, and yet she's not forbidden to her husband. Where the whole thing was done based on a, on a mistake, you know, made some kind of a condition and didn't work out. Um, she had a child, she had a child. She could walk out and, and move on. And therefore, we see it's possible that it's, 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 it's possible as no loose, and that's what it's talking about here. Just quickly, his name, Kainim. If they were both Kainim, then we talk about that. If he strikes either one, he doesn't get his lashes because how do you know which one is his father? Don't know we learned. He could have a chazav, he could If he hit this person and then he hit this person, kills there. The chazav kills there. He cursed this, this man because we're not sure which one is his father. Then he cursed the one, kill his name, If you curse both together, or he took a stick and you get one wallop and you hit them both on the head. Chayv, your chayv. Since in each of these cases, one of them definitely is your father, and therefore Ramer holds your chayv. Even when you hit one, and then you hit the other one, if they gave him a separate warning, one of the warnings, you know, each warning was only a surah sofik. Rameir, the the the, 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 the doesn't care about surah sofik. You gave him a warning, even though you're not 100 percent sure an avera will be committed. It's enough of a sufficient warning. Rabbi Yudah says, "Bevas aches chayv." Is that a part? Yudah no. If it's one after another, you part because each warning you gave, you didn't know for sure that the person committing a sin because maybe it wasn't his father. But if he, if you can see that he's about to hit both at the same time and you warn him because one of them definitely is your father, so it's definitely hasra. Um, your chayv. But if um. Or have another part. Says the Gemara about time you learn another place. You don't have a part of Vasachas. That even in one go, he says you are part of. We'll soon see why. So I said you're right. Today, Tanoi leave Rabbi Yehuda. Two, two opinions. What Rabbi Yehuda said. Says the Gemara about possible reason. My time in the man the part. If you had a bat and you hit both of them and you knew you could hit both of them, you're warned. Why would you be part? Because you know what? I'll tell you what. Nema bracha. When it comes to cursing, he talks about you shouldn't curse your parents. Bracha lamata down here in this earth. But then Mabrach Lamail also said he shouldn't curse from the Abishta above. Mala Maila Sha Ambush, there is only one Abishta. So when you curse the Abishta, you're only cursing the Abishta on Islam. Aplamata, so too, and when the Isa were comparing, equating the two. When you curse your, your, your parent, it's a pa- one parent on a time. Shaimba Shutfis on their own. And so that's cursing. And the East Kish Hakola. Once you know cursing, we also compare striking. To cursing. But Ayla Mishmari was quick to finish his story. Ayla Mishmari, he works with his group. Sounds like he should go work with them. Why should he go work with them? Um, and why should he go work with them? Uh, he's not going to get compensated. He won't get a share. So the Gemara, the Gemara asks back, interesting question. Lama Ayla. Ha'ama bin Lama Mitzah. What do you mean? The guy says, this is the real Mitzah. You guys are all getting rewarded for it. I'm doing Loyim Manasseh Kabbos Plus. I'm going to be working here just because they said it's a big mitzvah to work in the base of Mikdash. So here it's a mitzvah, it's not just a, a, a job. Ella, Ola, like, like Tani, Ella, Ola, Valkarchai. So Yomara says, it doesn't say Ola, he went up, because then you're like, Ola means voluntary. It says Ola, to teach you Balkarcha. We actually force him to work in the base of Mikdash. Um, and why is that? Because the family can say, everybody's going to know you're, you're, you're one of us, and why aren't you working? They can say, ah, there's something wrong. The parents misbehave, and every time you do that, it brings to light the misbehavior of the family. It's a pagam on the home of therefore you have to come to work. Even though if they, this kid did nothing wrong at all, if any of the parents, it doesn't matter. You have to go to work. Otherwise, a pagam, a blight on the entire family. So everyone has a responsibility to make sure that the family name doesn't get embarrassed. Interesting concept. The Yimah Yishnei Mishra, they're both from the same group. Then he, he, he joins them and he can get 
single shift. So you want to make no, I don't understand. There were 24 groups, there were 24 groups, each one had another week. But within that week, there were six different families. So what if they if they're all part of the same group? But the different families, you work Monday, you work Tuesday. So um, he has, if, if Monday he works, they say to him, you probably belong to the family of Tuesday. Tuesday they say you belong to family of Monday. So why does he automatically get a shit? Says so he can each one push off the next one. Even if it's the same group, but it could be Monday and Tuesday. Also, on the high base of Mach, they go to this family, they say, Hey, you belong to other family. And then go to other family, they say, You belong to this family. I'm going to pop up and come. This is what Misha's talking about. Not only the same group, but you're also the same family. If they're all part of the same family, then when he works, he gets one portion. Okay, everyone have a good day.